bring it over. You lock those together, select all these, explode them. Select them again, make them a component. We just created the skin for this aircraft. Um, of course the formers you would just grab, uh, make copies of usually, and uh, spin them along the red handles here using the move tool. 90 degrees, it'll tell you the angle down here too. Now these, you can actually um, go through and what I do is explode these and then right click. Oh, let me see something here. Ex uh, double or triple click them, explode them, and then go to flat edge and go to flatten selected edges. And they'll flatten it right on the zero edge with everything else. Zero plane, sorry. Select it again and uh, I usually make it a component so I can move them around in the safe cutting area and whatnot. Speaking of that, this is our flat printer safe cutting area. Let's take the skin, bring it in here, <clears throat> and explode it. Now some of you guys might want to make copies of this part too after you've done all that work. I usually make copies of this and uh, leave it over here somewhere, <clears throat> somewhere and hide it, you know. <clears throat> so let's triple click that one. I'm going to angle the plane a little bit using my middle mouse button and I'm going to grab my move tool and move this straight up which is uh, just hovering over top. And what I would do is there's a plugin up here that you can use if you download it called repair broken lines. Um, you would click on that and see if there's any lines that need to be repaired but even if there isn't still go to the flat edge and go to flatten selected edges. And that will show you there's problems here. Okay, so we can see that there are problem areas here. Let's take a look at them. Let's see what the problem is. A lot of now, a lot of times you can just take. I'm going to do a top view here. <clears throat> you could take and just redraw over the line sometimes, and it'll find the broken line. Let me even first see if there's a face here. And there's there's no faces there draw over these lines. I think I see one of them. Yeah, there's a broken line right here. Connect that. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight. <coughs> It'll never get in that far anyway. There's also a broken line here, and this is the main one. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me zoom out a little bit. This button here zooms everything out. Sometimes SketchUp gets laggy and you can use that button to zoom around a little quicker. You can also, um, when you're in the move tool, you can also hold down your, uh, or any tool I think. Let me try something here. You can hold, if you have the middle mouse button held down, you can hit shift and that'll give you your pan. So the middle mouse plus shift gives you a pan. Middle mouse is orbit plus shift is pan. And one thing I would do here is probably, I know that the bit will never reach in here, so it's just too tight of an area. Um, so you might even just want to connect these and uh, get rid of some of these lines just to make a cleaner drawing for yourself. Get rid of that. And then find the center there. That's just, um, that would clean it up a little bit, basically. That's uh, one way you could do it. Oops. And remember, when you find the center, it'll turn, it'll tell you you stop for a minute on there, it'll say midpoint. Even that didn't click to the midpoint that time. <clears throat> SketchUp tries its best, its best to help you snap in to the closest thing, but sometimes that can be a pain. Oops. We'll go to the fold, uh, fold tool right here. And we got our depth that remembered at 50%, so I'm just going to select these. 
So it breaks these away from the main outside selection, which is what we want it to do. Now, no, now you might want to say, I want to make this a center line, but that actually looks pretty good. And when you fold it, after you do these a couple of times, you'll realize how it needs to fold. If it needs to be broken into several folds or one, uh, you'll see. But that looks pretty good. I think that'll help with the folding. Okay, so I'm going to go up and do an outside, and now you'll notice, since we fixed it, it actually is selecting the whole thing now um, as a face. So you can actually tell by just selecting this, and you'll see it connects everything. But let's go ahead and assign an outside cut there. Uh, at that point, you would go through and put your tabbing in. And of course, all these parameters are set up under the dialog box here how far you want your tabbing to be. Um, we're doing some beta testing with the multi-pass. That's what's at the bottom there. But you got a, this is also a beta test, but your feed rates, uh, your tab depth factor, and your tab width right here. You can set that, you want to set all that up before you actually start marking your model up. And if you mess anything up, uh, it's always good to keep that second copy like I was saying over here because at this point if I try to copy this I'm gonna end up with all these markups on it so one thing I could do if I do make that mistake is copy it using the move tool hold down control one time I could copy this whole thing and I can right click on it and uh, I always do this Let's see. copy the whole thing right click on it go to flat edge and uh, erase selected flat edges and and it should bring me back to normal. I could take this whole section, make it a component, and then just hide it in case I ever need it. Of course, if I don't have that, I could always unwrap it again. Same thing with this. The formers we can bring in and uh, just explode them. You know, force of habit for me, even though I know this is uh, already flattened, is I go through and go to repair. Uh, broken lines and also Quok on the platform just wrote a little macro that'll repair the broken lines and do the flatten uh, script at the same time so boom it knocks it out but you could just uh, go to flat edge and go to flatten selected edges but it makes it a lot easier uh, the way Quok wrote it there so we'll do an inside and an outside and our tabbing and you can save that. I'll put it to code. Uh, let me see. I'll try it. I'll go to. I'll output it. All right, and then go to plugins. If you're using, using Tim's uh, plot to G code program, we can actually take a look at this before we bring it into mock. Let's see what's happening here, and you'll see what it's doing. It's doing those at 50%. These are our fold lines. That's a 50% depth into the foam. And then eventually when it finishes those, it's going to come over here and it's going to cut the whole outside out. And of course, our tabbing will be uh, incorporated in there. Once that's done, it jumps over to this part, cuts this middle hole, cuts this out, and then heads all the way back to the uh, foam position, which is here. So, <clears throat> reset that. so that's pretty much how you would, that's how I would design a, a simple fuselage. You can get as complex as you want with it. Um, yeah, uh, TV Casualty on the platform has some really complex designs. You could use the same technique for wings, um, pretty much uh, anything you're trying to build and make it into a 3D model. So I hope this tutorial helped you guys um, that were asking about it. And get out there and start creating some cool stuff. We'll see you.